say good morning. Myself, uh, Professor Sanjay Singh, working in Department of Aeronautical Engineering, Vinayaka Missions, Krupananda Variyar Engineering College, Salem. In this present semester, I am handling experimental stress analysis for my 8th semester students. So today, I am going to have a discussion on this particular topic, experimental stress analysis. And uh, especially, I want to discuss on resistance strain gauges today, that is applications of resistance strain gauges. So, in continuation to that, or you can say, uh, regarding the explanation of resistance strain gauges, I want to give them some basic concepts to my students regarding what actually is a resistance. So that electrical property resistance of a material that I am going to discuss today in detail so that they will be able to understand the basic concept behind making of this strain gauges that is resistance strain gauges and their utilizations in various mechanical applications to measure temperature sorry to measure forces various types of deformations stress pressure okay so all these things are measured by using resistance strain gauges i will be discussing about different types of strain gauges also but let me uh, tell them first that what actually is a strain sorry what actually yes uh, of course i will be telling them about the strain also i will be telling them about stress also i will be telling them about uh, modulus of elasticity and the stress strain curve also i am going to discuss with them today and uh, the main thing is as my topic is resistance strain gauges so i will be discussing completely about resistance i will tell them that what actually is a resistance then the factors on which the resistance depends little bit i will tell them about conductor and insulator then i will be telling them about resistivity the very important property of a material resistivity their si units then I will be telling them little bit uh, about the resistors which are connected in series and in parallel so that they will be able to find out equivalent resistance when the resistors are connected in series and in parallel and in combination of these two. Though this video I am preparing to help my students in this practically difficult situation of COVID-19 outbreak when they are staying in their home. So just because I belong to aeronautical department and I am handling this particular subject for my students, it doesn't mean that uh, this particular video will be useful only for them, it will be useful for others also. Even the students who are in first year now studying the basic concepts of electrical and electronics and even uh, you can say other people also who are studying electrical and electronics engineering okay so let us move ahead to discuss on this particular topic okay so let us start today's class on resistance on resistance so today i am going to discuss about resistance of a material so it is yes of course it is electrical resistance only it is electrical resistance right so 
what actually is a resistance so before that we have already studied in our uh, previous classes our basic understanding of electrical and electronics we are already aware okay of this uh, particular topic basic understanding of electrical conductors and insulators so what actually is a conductor a conductor is a material a conductor is a material which allows current to pass through it easily so resistance is related with conductor so conductor is a material which allows current to pass through it easily whereas if we will discuss about an insulator so which do not allow which do not allow current to pass through it easily so if you will take an example of a conductor then uh, you can say mostly all metals are good conductors of electricity so you can say copper aluminum iron silver gold okay so mostly all metals are good conductor of electricity if you will go for an insulator so glass is an insulator then wood dry wood plastic okay so this type of materials do not allow current to pass through it easily and that's why these are coming under the category of insulator even water due to the availability of salt in it it is a good conductor of electricity okay even water also water okay right now i will tell you about resistance so resistance is the property of material resistance it is the property of material by virtue of which it opposes the flow of current through it so resistance is the property of material inherent property this property is inherent property okay of material by virtue of which it is opposing the flow of current it opposes the flow of current okay right hmm. so now okay as i told resistance is the property of material by which by virtue of which it opposes the flow of current okay so resistance is denoted generally by like this okay and it is denoted by capital r in most of the cases if more number of resistances are there then it will be denoted as r1 r2 r3 in a circuit there can be any number of resistors depending on the application okay so the unit of resistance SI unit is ohm, which is denoted by like this. So ohm. Okay. So SI unit of resistance is ohm. Okay. 
so here you have seen that uh, the current which is flowing through a material is being opposed by some property which is called resistance okay which is called resistance so inverse of this resistance or you can say opposite to the resistance opposite of the resistance is called conductance is called conductance and generally this conductance is denoted by small sigma okay sigma yes that rho we will be utilizing for resistivity we will be utilizing for resistivity now right okay so let us have knowledge of the factors now which are the factors okay the resistance will be depending on so factors on which the resistance depends So the very first thing resistance depends on first length of the conductor resistance depends on length of the conductor second it depends on area of cross section of the conductor and third it depends on temperature of the conductor and fourth it depends on nature of material nature of material so here we will take temperature as constant value the constant value so temperature is not varying at present okay so resistance depends on length of the conductor that is directly proportional directly area of cross section of the conductor that is inversely proportional okay so based on that we can write r is directly proportional to length of the conductor r is inversely proportional to area of the conductor area of cross section of the conductor combining this 1 and 2 we will get r is proportional to l by a which can further be written as r is equal to rho l by a where rho is equal to resistivity of the conductor resistivity of the conductor okay or resistivity of the material this resistivity value is unique for each and every material for each and every material copper will be having a different uh, resistivity value then silver will be having different resistivity value aluminium will be having different different resistivity value okay so this resistivity value of the material is its own property so experimentally it is being found uh, for each and every material resistivity is are being determined experimentally it is okay and uh, if anywhere in calculation we need to find so suppose if we need to find resistance or area where we need to utilize the value of resistivity then the value of resistivity will be given to you in the examination okay right sometimes by uh, putting all the values we need to find out the resistivity of the uh, you can say material and uh, from the standard values given in tables we will be able to find that what actually is the material so sometimes it will be asked that which material is being utilized 
which is having this resistance which is having uh, you can say this much length of the uh, material and area of cross section is so and so find out the resistivity and predict the uh, material so from that table we will be able to define we will be able to find out which type of material is utilized here okay right so now i have shown you that what actually is the resistivity okay so resistivity we were finding out resistivity now okay finding out resistivity so as we have seen r is equal to rho l by a okay r is equal to rho l by a so rho is equal to r a by l now if we will be putting the units so for the unit of resistance is ohm the unit of area is meter square the unit of length is meter so meter meter will get cancelled and thereby unit of resistivity will be ohm meter so what it is unit unit of resistivity is ohm meter okay is ohm meter so this resistivity value is unique for each and every material unique for so rho is unique for each and every material unique for each and every material right hmm so in strain gauges we will be discussing about this resistivity so resistance strain gauges where changes in resistance takes place okay where changes in resistance is takes place so i told you about resistance i told you about resistivity and now i will be telling you that uh, when the resistors are connected in series and when the resistors are connected in parallel so how to find out equivalent resistance that point also i will tell you okay before that ohm's law i have not told you let me tell you about ohm's law also so what actually is ohm's law so ohm's law is at constant temperature at constant temperature okay current applied is directly proportional to the potential difference across the conductor okay so at constant temperature current applied is directly proportional to the potential difference across the conductor so that is there it means i is directly proportional to v which you can also write as v is proportional to i and thereby you can write v is equal to i r and r will be the constant of proportionality constant of proportionality constant of proportionality this r and which is called resistance which is called resistance okay now let us see when the resistors are connected in series and when the resistors are connected in parallel resistors are in series in series means one after another this is one resistor 
then again another resistor is connected then again another resistor is connected and in this way a circuit is made okay yes and meter is connected here okay if you want to find out volt voltage of this circuit potential difference then across the resistor you can put one voltmeter also and this one too. okay so when this resistors are in series okay this resistors are in series so one thing you need to remember when the resistors are in series voltage across the resistors are not same voltage across the resistors are not same so potential difference across the resistors are not same so if suppose the total v or potential difference developed by the battery is v okay and across r1 suppose it is v1 across r2 it is v2 across r3 it is v3 and the current developed in the circuit is i so i is same everywhere current is same potential difference across the resistors are not same but current is same therefore we can find total potential difference as v is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 so the total potential difference will be the sum of the potential differences across each resistor okay this potential difference v we can write at i r where r will be the equivalent resistance okay v1 we can write it as i r1 okay plus i r2 plus i r3 i from both side we can cancel it and r equivalent we will be able to find out as r1 plus r2 plus r3 so this will be there when the resistors are connected in series okay so when the resistors are connected in series you can say that r equivalent we can find r1 plus r2 plus r3 okay now let us find out when the resistors are connected in parallel okay when resistors are connected in parallel in this circuit what happens the resistors will be connected in this way connected in this way this is the circuit this is the switch meter is connected here right current i v when the resistors are connected in parallel we have to understand that potential difference difference across each resistor are equal current across each resistors will get divided as per the resistance as per the resistance 
So we can say that with R1, suppose it is I1, the I is getting divided as I1, I2 and I3. Okay. Hmm. Now, it means this current I has got divided as I1 plus I2 plus I3. Okay. What we have seen? I is equal to what? V by R? So, V by R. So, R equivalent as per Ohm's law, V is equal to I R. Correct? V is equal to I R. So, I will be equal to V by R? Yes. So, by utilizing that same principle, we can write V is equal to R equivalent and I1 we can write as V by R1 plus V by R2 plus V by R3. So now, V, we can cancel it from both sides. It will become R equivalent is equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3. Okay. So when the resistors are connected in parallel, we will be able to find equivalent resistance for complete, uh, you can say, circuit will be equal to 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2 plus 1 by R3, reciprocal of them and we will be adding it, right? Okay. Similarly, when the resistors are connected in series, so what we have found, we have to simply add their numerical values R2 plus R3 and we will be able to find equivalent resistance. Okay. So, in this way, resistance values can be calculated in a circuit. Now, I will be discussing about stress and strain. Okay, let us go to the next page. I will be discussing about stress and strain now. So let us have a discussion on stress. Okay. So what actually is stress? This is a mechanical term actually. Okay. So stress is the internal resisting force of a body or material. So, stress is internal resisting force of a body or material. Okay. So, it is a resisting force. If we are applying any type of, uh, you can say, force or pressure on a body, so that body itself will develop to oppose some force, oppose, that is, that will be the opposing forces, it will be uh, opposing that any type of deformation which would occur in that particular body, okay. So this is actually a resisting force. So how stress is found? So generally sigma is being used to denote stress in strength of material, we all have studied about strength of uh, stress in strength of material when we were studying and even in aircraft structures also when you were studying at that time you have seen that we have discussed about stress. Okay. So, this will be the force developed, resisting force developed inside the body per unit area, per unit area. So, it is unit, which unit? SI unit of sigma is what? Newton per meter square. You know that pressure is also equal to force by area. Okay. So, Newton per meter square or even we can write it as Pascal also. We can write it as Pascal also. Okay. So, SI unit of sigma is Newton per meter square or Pascal. 
now string string so suppose a body is there in front of you and its original length is l you are applying some tensile force p okay you can write it as p by a also if your load is p okay load is in newton so load applied is p per unit area so we can write as sigma is equal to p by a also similarly here if you have applied the tensile load tensile load means you are pulling it so that pulling action will make its length to get changed suppose the change has occurred with some delta l okay right some delta l change has occurred right hmm. so now after applying the load the length l has become l plus delta l meter therefore strain which is generally denoted by epsilon will be equal to change in length divided by original length change in length by original length and this will be what l plus delta l minus l by original length l l l has got cancelled so delta l by l so a strain has become delta l by l now what will be the unit of a strain no unit why because this is the ratio of same physical quantity that is length so there will not be any unit of this particular strain so i hope you have understood about stress and strain of a body okay so now let us discuss about modulus of elasticity modulus of elasticity which is also called as young's modulus also called as young's modulus denoted by e denoted by e okay so now before that i should tell you about elasticity okay what is elasticity see each and every body is elastic in nature to some extent to some extent each and every body is elastic in nature to some extent like wood wood is also elastic to some nature it's not that it is very much elastic just like rubber no rubber is also having a limit of elasticity so elastic limit is the limit which you can say when you are applying any type of load or force on the body it starts getting deformed means deformation starts changing uh, taking place deformation in the sense it will be changing its shape it will be changing its size it will be changing its uh, area length volume hmm? so that is called a deformation and when we release that load which we have applied if the body is coming back to its original position then the body can be said as elastic so this elastic limit is having one particular point and if we have crossed the load of that particular point it means that particular body will start deforming permanently there will not be the deformation will not revert back 
and will be getting removed it will become permanent like rubber if you start stretching okay so up to a certain point if you will release it again it will come back to its original position but in case if you have stressed it further beyond its elastic limit its elasticity will be removed elasticity it will lose and it will come to plasticity it means that deformation will be permanent so this is the property of each and every material and uh, the same is applicable for all all the bodies okay so what young's modulus has said hmm? young's modulus has said that up to the elastic limit up to the elastic limit stress is directly proportional to strain stress is directly proportional to strain and this can be written as e strain where e is called what modulus of elasticity young's modulus of elasticity so e can be written as sigma by epsilon so stress by strain and what will be the unit so the unit of sigma you are already knowing that newton per meter square and there is no unit of strain so thereby the unit of young's modulus of elasticity e is the same as for stress as for stress so this is called young's modulus of elasticity now one more thing i want to tell you that is stress strain curve or we are cal calling it as engineering stress strain curve strain stress strain curve so when we go for drawing a graph so if this x axis is strain y axis it is stress this sigma this is epsilon so what we found that we found the graph used to be generally a straight line up to this some point this point just name it as a which will, which can be called as proportional limit or elastic limit proportional limit or elastic limit where the stress and the strain is directly proportional that's why this particular line is a straight line okay and from here up to some point up to some point the deformation uh, will be occurring and again it will come back to its original position depends on the situation depends on the body but from here permanent deformation will start permanent deformation will start from here okay and from this particular limit that permanent deformation will be continuous up to a certain point so if it is b this point is c up to a certain point okay so this curve is called ultimate strength ultimate strength up to this point ultimate point c and from here the graph will go down it means what happens after a with little stress more deformation is taking place with little stress more deformation is taking place okay so the rate of deformation will be faster in this region after a up to a which is elastic limit okay a is elastic limit whereas b is yield point yield point so that much deformation has not taken place up to b but from b it will be much more faster with little stress the strain will be increasing at a higher rate 
and after C the material will get failed okay so this is the sign of either fracture or failure failure so this stress strain curve will be a little bit different for brittle material and for ductile material okay so ductile material somewhere here itself near to be it will uh, fail it will fail but for ductile material for brittle material that will fail here for ductile material it will be having a curve and somewhere at this particular point that failure will occur okay so this yield point then c is ultimate stress ultimate stress ultimate beyond which it will fail so this is ultimate strength what i, I have said c is is ultimate stress or ultimate strength so this is called engineering stress strain curve i have already explained to all my students in class and for their revision as they are in home now so in order to energize them in order to warm up them just today i have described some of the basic concepts which they must know so that we will be going for our next topic as resistance strain gauges in detail and i have to tell them about resistance strain gauges its construction various types of strain gauges which are being used in many applications okay so this particular concept they must know and one more thing i want to tell them about wheat stone bridge okay so wheat stone bridge also i will be having a discussion wheat stone bridge so in wheat stone bridge what happens there used to be four resistors and there used to be a galvanometer right all are connected in a circuit right so just i am explaining to them okay if this is p and if this resistor is q if this resistor is r this resistor is s suppose in this case this r is unknown wheat stone bridge is used to find out an unknown resistance in the circuit where other three resistances are known to us okay so wheat stone bridge is a device used to measure an unknown resistance so what happens due to this circuit there will be a flow of current i now i this will be getting divided into suppose it is i1 and i2 okay from here suppose this uh, the current flows through galvanometer is ig is ig now in the circuit these p q and s are designed in such a way are made uh, are used in such a way that they are variable resistor okay it means we can vary the resistance if we are able to vary the resistance so on adjustment of this variable resistances one time will come when the current through galvanometer will become zero okay there will not be any flow of current with the galvanometer so how when you are going for adjustment okay this galvanometer which is showing the current okay 
though it will be a small amount of current, but it will be showing some current deflection, that deflection of the needle will come to zero. When that zero position has come, we can say that the circuit is totally balanced. Once the circuit is totally balanced, it means the ratio P by Q is equal to R by S will be followed. Okay, so the resistor P by Q, ratio of the resistors P by Q is equal to R by S. And if these three resistors are known to us, we will be able to find out the value of R. Okay, so on this Wheatstone bridge principle, the resistance strain gauges works. Okay, on this particular principle. So now, I will be stopping my discussion today on this particular point and today I have explained to my students about what is resistance, what is conductor, what is insulator, what is Ohm's law, what is resistivity, then I discussed about mechanical properties, what is stress, then what is strain, okay, what are the various formulas, mathematical formulas has to be used, then I discussed about modulus of elasticity, wheat stone bridge, okay, measuring stress strain curve, and based on this information, I need my students to completely revise these principles, revise these concepts and in my next video, I will be discussing about resistance strain gauge completely. Okay? So, right. Thank you. Stay home. Stay safe.